Hello, everybody. It's Jacob here, and welcome to week two, day four. We're so close to being done with week two and wrapping up our introduction to DAP Starter, and you only have one week with me left, I promise. So today, we're going to be going over the UI harness and the client, which is our fourth part in this diagram here. So from the day two and day three readmes, you've probably been seeing this diagram a lot, and you'll notice that each day, we've gone through one of these boxes. So on day four, we are on day one, sorry, of week two, we were modifying kibble.cdc, which was our contract. And then during week two, day three, we went over how we could change the transactions and scripts and modify our DAP lib to, um, you know, try and, and, and figure out a way that we could, you know, call into our DAP lib and, and make these transactions and scripts run. And so that was this orange box right here where, you know, we were having our DAP lib call the transactions, passing it data, you know, putting a signer or a proposer, and that's what we did yesterday. And so today we're gonna go over how does the UI harness, which is this, call into our DAP lib, which is this orange box, which then gets this whole process running. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, so to start out, if you wanna find the client, you have to go to packages, client, source, harness, and then fast forward harness. So it's a bit of a journey, but once you're here, you'll see that there's a bunch of um, things called action cards, which I've been referring to all week, and they're all, uh, most of them are already set up for you. So what I want to do is I want to go to our client, and I want to start with, you know, let's just say one of these, and I want to show you how the whole process works and how it's all connected. So let's look here. This one says, day one kibble setup account. Well, let's go to our VS code and let's figure out where this is set up. And you'll notice it's right here. So we have an action card. The title is day one kibble setup account. So the title is what goes in this uh, dark blue box up here. Then there's a description that says setup account to handle kibble. And if you go to here, that's in this little box down below. So this is where the description goes. Then you'll see an action. And this is called kibble setup account, and the method is post. So what these two mean is if the method is post, this means we're running a transaction. And if the method is get, this means we're running a script. So because we put post here, this means we're running a transaction and we'll have a submit button. Okay. And the action, which is kibble setup account, is the name of the JavaScript function that lies in the DAP lib. So if we go to the DAP lib, you'll see this says kibble setup account. That's the function that we put inside our action here. Lastly, there's a fields. And what the fields is, is all the data that we're gonna pass from the client to the DAP lib. So if we go back to our, our page here, you'll see we have one field called signer and it's an account widget, right? This is called an account widget. So when you click on it, you'll have access to all the accounts. Now, when we go to our client, you'll see that there's a field and it's there's one field called signer. So inside our action card, let me separate this by spaces. Inside our action card, you'll see an account widget. And the account widget has a field. So this is the field that this one represents. So this maps to signer and a label. And so the label is, you know, signer with a capital S and that's what goes uh, right here. So that this is the label. And then, um, so this account widget is being used as the field, right? So whatever that we, whenever we select, let's say I select Burball, right? When we run and I click submit, it's going to run this action card and pass Burball as our field. So then when we go to our DAP lib here, you'll see that we have data.signer. Now the reason it's data.signer is because signer is the name of our field, which is right here. So you can begin to see how our UI harness connects to our DAP lib and how we're actually passing in data. So when I click on Burball here and click submit, it's going to represent Burball in this account widget. It's going to pass it to here in data.signer. And then this is going to call kibble setup account. And we know where this is. It's in interactions, transactions, kibble, setup account, and Burball will get passed in as the signer here. So hopefully you can see this flow from the UI harness to the DAP lib to the transactions, to the contracts. Um, 
And so this is kind of an example of, of an action card. Now, let's go back to our uh, fast forward harness and look at some other examples. So let's go to a little more, let's go to a complicated one. Um, like for this one, for example, day two, kibble transfer tokens. Let's find it. So day two, kibble transfer tokens. It's this action card right here. So let's actually separate this so we can, you know, get a better understanding of what this, of what this looks like. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Um, okay, so this has day two kibble transfer tokens, the description, right, which is right here. And you'll see that this has transferred kibble from the signer to the recipient. And that's, you know, the description that's right here. And then, you know, we'll go to the action. So the action is kibble transfer tokens. So we're going to be calling, um, I'll look this up. So right here, kibble transfer token. So it's calling this, right? And kibble transfer tokens has a data.signer, a data.amount, and a data.recipient. Those are the, the, these are the two parameters we pass into our transaction. Now, if we go back to the fast forward harness, you'll see there's exactly that. There's three fields, one called signer, one called amount, and one called recipient. So signer is an account widget, right? That's the person we want to sign the transaction. Text widget is amount, and this is like the amount of kibble we want to transfer between accounts. So that's the text widget, and a text widget is this, right? So you can type in whatever you want. And the label we see is amount, right? Does that match what we have? Yes, the label is amount. And the placeholder is 30.0. That's the little grayed out uh, text you see here before I actually type anything in. So this helps you see what you might have to type in. And then we have a recipient account widget that's right here, right? And all of these fields are getting passed down into the DAP lib where we reference it with data.amount and data.recipient. So this is all really cool now that, now that we can see that. So I encourage you to, in your um, quest for today, one of them, you'll actually have to scroll down to where it says day four. And if we go to our UI harness, if you scroll down to day four, you'll see there's a bunch of already implemented action cards, but there's some that say null, like sell market item, buy market item, and read sale collection IDs. So one of your quests for today is gonna to be setting up these action cards on your own to be able to call into the DAP lib. So let's look at one, for example. This says to do, implement this action card. This is a transaction. So you'll have to go into this action card, implement it yourself, and make sure that you pass in the correct parameters that you'll need for, for this DAP web function, right? So for example, this says day four, Kitty Adams Market, sell market item. Okay, let's go to, in, let's go to our DAP lib and look for sell market item. Look, it's this one right here, sell market item. And you can see it takes in a data.signer, a data.item ID, and a price. So these are the fields we're going to have to make sure are set up inside this action card. So that's a little bit of a hint. Okay, cool. So that concludes the action cards and UI harness. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we start to go over tests.